Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Ashley. I'm an intern architect in Ontario and in today's video we're going to be talking about do you need to have a master's degree in architecture in order to become a licensed architect. We're also going to be clarifying why some people need a bachelor's degree only to get an accreditation through the CACB and others need a master's degree in order to get accreditation for their academics through the CACB in order to become a licensed architect. So we're gonna talk about those differences and why some of us need a master's degree and while others don't, so stay tuned. Also, if you're enjoying the channel and you're enjoying the videos, you're getting a lot of value out of it, make sure to subscribe. It really does help the channel and it helps me to figure out what is it that you guys want to see. Also, make sure to like the video. That also helps the YouTube algorithm and it makes sure that the video gets shared with other people that are interested on the same topic. So make sure to share that love as well and comment down below if there's anything that you would like to see in future videos or if you have any questions about this video specifically. So stay tuned and let's get started. So in order to become a licensed architect in Canada, you must get your education, which is part of the requirement to become a licensed architect. And that education must be done through an accredited school. So in Canada, there are 11 schools that offer accredited programs, master degree programs, that you can go to and receive your accreditation for your education requirement. Now, you could also, if you do go study in the States, there is the NAAB, which is for education outside of Canada and in the States. So you have to uh, get your education from an accredited school. Now, there is a bit of a confusion since some are able to avoid doing a master's degree and with only a bachelor's degree, they're able to get accreditation from the CACB. So why is it like that, that some of us need to do a master's degree, which adds an additional two years on top of your four years of your undergrad, and sometimes your master's degree might actually be longer than two years, depending on the program that you go to and depending on the school that you go to as well. So why is it that some of us need to do a master's degree? Well, let's take a look at the CACB website to go into it into further details. So here on the CACB website, you can see the list of the accredited programs in Canada. So there are 11 universities that currently offer accredited master degree programs. So from the top of the list, you have the University of British Columbia, where in Vancouver, and this is where I went to do my master's degree, and they've been accredited since 1996. So they've had their master's degree accredited since 1996. And every six years, the program goes through a focus evaluation through the CACB in order to make sure they continue to deliver the standards of accreditation. So they have to keep up that accreditation and every six years go through an evaluation to make sure that they are carrying everything out through the quality and acceptance of the CACB accreditation program. So here, which I find very interesting, and if you're looking at going to a Canadian university and you're considering doing your master's degree, I would find it, I find it very interesting to actually look at and review the visiting team report. And this will actually give you a lot of insight at what the schools need to improve upon and what are their advantages. So for example, let's go into UBC. So here you have the visiting team report for UBC by the CACB. And here you have just a table of contents which just gives you a little introduction of the CACB accreditation, summary of the team findings, um, compliance and conditions for accreditation, appendices, and so on. So let's just keep going. So here this is just an introduction of the CACB and the process of evaluation and how it is completed. And it goes through a six-year term with a focus evaluation at the end of three years and indicates that significant deficiencies exist. So if they go to that school and they see that they haven't 
been able to maintain that standard, then they would not get accreditation. So this is very important. And also if you're curious to see if the school you're planning to go to is accredited or not, then you would go on to the CACB. And so now you get into this, which is really interesting, is you get into the team's general comments and findings. So this is what I find very interesting and one of the things that I would actually, I wish I did when I was looking into universities was I actually went into these reports and I found that reading through these reports gave me a lot of insight about the school, both the things that they lack in and what they're really good at. And when you start to look at these findings and reports against the other schools, you really start to see what they all are about. And having gone to UBC and just looking at this report and seeing the things that they did not meet, really, I have to agree with them. So having gone through the school and experienced it myself, I would agree with this assessment. It's pretty dead on. So for example, here we have the conditions for accreditation met is on the left and not met is on the right. So you can see here that uh, public information was not met, physical resources was not met, which is true. UBC does not have that many resources, um, but I don't think that was a huge drawback. They still had 3D printers, laser cutters, but perhaps compared to other schools, it wasn't um, didn't have that many resources like we didn't have a computer lab but that also reduced the tuition costs so for me not having a computer lab but having a better price in terms of my tuition fee was worth it because i already had my own computer going into the program so i don't really need a fancy computer lab either i mean yes it would have been nice if i could get that without paying extra fees for my tuition but I can live without that. And so they go on with other um, criteria, just picking out on the items that they did not meet was there's also cultural diversity. Um, they also accessibility was an issue also for uh, that particular building. Um, I would agree with that. Um, they didn't have the best accessibility in the building and Building economics and cost control was also an issue because it was an older building. Uh, project delivery and practice organization were items that were lacking also in the program. Now you can get into each aspect and they actually go and write in detail what exactly they found that needs more improvement in the program and things that they feel like they want to see in the next visit, um, which they hope to see. So one of the things uh, about UBC was there was a loss of a connection and a downtown presence because the campus is outside of downtown Vancouver, which was at times a bit of a drawback about the program. But for me, again, it wasn't a deal breaker per se. We, um, UBC used to have a downtown studio, but then they ended up not no longer having that downtown studio anymore. The other concerns that they had was a lack of clarity around the new facility. There is no clear need for either a new building or a renovated or expanded building. Um, so there was a lack of communication about that. And they were having talks about getting a new building, but that wasn't very clear. And then of course, physical resources um, was another cause of concern, which they did not meet. It was, the design studios were, kind of, were a bit on the smaller end. Um, there wasn't, the architecture building didn't have a lot of space. So I can see how that was a cause of concern for them. Um, and we didn't have a lot of space to begin with. So I, I, could, I could see that being a concern for the accreditation visit. And so you can go into this in further detail, as you can see. And this really begins to give you an idea about the school. And it really gives you some insight about the school, especially where they begin to really spell out why they didn't meet the criteria. 
and then you can kind of make that decision for yourself as well if that's something that's important or not important and so you can go through this there's the comprehensive design program strengths so they also list the strengths about the program um, and it goes on and of course there's the team also gives some recommendations on what they could improve um, in terms of the program as well so there you have it that's the assessment for UBC and so they've only been accredited since 1996 and of course they spell out here the terms and at the end of every three terms they need to go through an evaluation um, so the next term that they need to get evaluated is 2024. So funny enough, I remember being there when they were getting evaluated. So it's probably at the time when this was, this report was written. Um, so I remember them going through this process and the anticipation of the team coming in and evaluating the program. So here you have also the University of Calgary and they've been accredited their master's degree has been accredited since since 1995 and so their next accreditation visit is in 2023 and then here you have Carleton which had a bachelor's degree in architecture that was accredited from 1995 to 2005. So this is where the confusion lies, where some people say, well, there are others that only did a bachelor's degree in architecture and their education is accredited through the CACB and then others, they need to do a master's degree. Now, as you can see here, it really depends on what school and what program you did and the time of your degree so if you did your degree in let's say 2006 then that bachelor of architecture wouldn't have been accredited in 2006 since it was only accredited from 1995 to 2005 so if you did your bachelors of architecture between 1995 and 2005 then you would have been accredited. You did. You completed an accredited program through the CACB and it wasn't necessary to do a master's degree since it was accredited. And of course, if it wasn't accredited, you need to do a master's degree that is accredited. So at that time, um, there was a Bachelor of Architecture that was accredited and you didn't need to do a master's degree. But that of course all changed because after 2005, the master's degree kicked in and then that became accredited and the master's degree and the master's degree became the predominant uh, program and the bachelor's degree was no longer an accredited program so you needed to get your master's degree now the bachelor's degree that was accredited wasn't a four-year program it was a longer program I can't remember but it I can't remember if it was a five to six year program but it was something along those lines so you it wasn't a four-year program it wasn't as short it was a bit longer but it used to be accredited through Carleton University and of course now they have the master's degree that's accredited and of course they're going through the same uh, evaluation they get evaluated as well and their next accreditation visit is in 2023 and here you have Dalhousie University which also offers an accredited master's degree program and it's been accredited since 1994 and their terms of accreditation happens every six years um, effective 2015 and it will end in June 30 2021 and then ne their next accreditation visit is in 2021 and again if you were curious about their accreditation visit, you can just click on their accreditation team report and you can see what that looked like. Laval used to also have a bachelor in architecture that was accredited and it used to be accredited from 1994 to 2004. And of course, after 2004, it stopped being accredited and then they started offering a master's degree in architecture 
that was accredited since 2002. And their next accreditation visit, as you can see here, is 2025, and they have their visiting report here as well. Now I'll be linking this link down below um, in the description box if you want to visit it and get into the details of things and perhaps go through and read all through the uh, team reports for each one. So here we have the University of Manitoba which has an accredited program in architecture for their master's degree since 1996 and so their next accreditation is in 2024. Here we have McGill, and McGill University used to have a Bachelor of Architecture that was accredited during the terms of 1996 to 2001, but they no longer have that since their master's degree now kicked in in 2001 and the master's degree started to become an accredited program, so their undergrad is no longer accredited, only the master's degree is accredited. And of course, they are also gonna have their next accreditation visit in 2024. And their visiting team report is down below here. You can click on it and go through it. The University of Montreal used to also have an accredited bachelor's degree and it was valid from 1994 to 2004. And their master's degree, uh, which was accredited, started accreditation since 1999. So they no longer have the bachelor's degree that's accredited, only the master's degree. Most of today, most of the undergrad programs in architecture are not accredited. It's only the master's degrees that are accredited. So the four universities that you see here, they all have accredited master's, de master's degrees. There's no longer accredited undergrad degrees. So that's something to keep in mind. So Ryerson here uh, has a master's of architecture accredited program since 2010. And their next accreditation visit is in 2025. So their program is probably one of the newest programs that's been, um, that's been accredited since. So their undergrad was never accredited and they have now their master's degree since 2010 that's been accredited. And their next accreditation visit is in 2025. About the school, you can look into the team report and get some details on the program. The University of Toronto had an undergrad, a Bachelor of Architecture, that was accredited. Now, their terms of accreditation for their undergrad was since 1994 to 2004. So their program was accredited from 1994 to 2004, their undergrad program. Now, the only thing that is accredited is their master's degree in architecture, which has been accredited since 2002. And their next accreditation visit is in 2025. And of course, if you're curious about the program, you can go and look into the team report. The University of Waterloo used to have an accredited undergrad bachelor's degree in architecture, and it was accredited from 1993 to 2005. And they also have a, a master's degree that's accredited since 2002. And their next visit for accreditation is in 2023. So of course, they no longer have their undergrad of architecture accredited. It's now only their master's degree, which of course is all 11 schools. They all are now only master's degrees that are accredited. So there you have it. If you did your undergraduate degree and it was accredited during the time of which you graduated, then you don't have to do a master's degree because you already have an accredited program and you can then take the next steps to becoming an architect. 
Now, if you did your undergraduate degree and it wasn't accredited at the time you graduated, then you're going to need to do a master's degree that is accredited in order to become a licensed architect. So for example, for me, so I did my undergraduate degree and at the time when I graduated, the program was not accredited. So I had to do a master's degree that was accredited in order to become a licensed architect. So I knew I wanted to become a licensed architect, so I had to go ahead and do a master's degree through an accredited program. So I went to UBC in order to do that. Now, if you completed your accredited degree outside of Canada, so in the US, for example, you would need to make sure that that program is accredited through the NAB. And they have a list of the schools that are accredited and their programs of which are accredited through their accreditation process. So you have to make sure that it is an accredited program so that when you want to get your license, you're able to do so. And of course, if you're an international student I'll be doing a separate video because there's a lot to impact if you are an international student and you're trying to get your education accredited or you're trying to transfer your license from another country to Canada so that's going to be a separate video so if you are interested to becoming a licensed architect and your undergrad was not accredited then yes you need to do your master's degree now your master's degree is only necessary if you're really thinking about becoming a licensed architect. If you're not thinking about getting licensed, then really there's no real purpose to getting a master's degree. Um, now you might be thinking it's great for your own personal growth, but you are investing quite a bit in your education. So that's something to keep in mind. If you aren't really gonna get licensed, then I would think twice about doing your master's degree. So there you have it, you guys. I hope this video was helpful. If the video was helpful and you got a lot of value out of it, make sure to like the video. That lets me know that you enjoyed the video, that the content is valuable. If you have any questions, make sure to comment down below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. And that also might spark some ideas for future videos if there's a lot to unpack. So if you guys are also enjoying the channel, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So I'll see you guys next time on future videos. Bye!